So we're here at the Northern Bank. Could you tell us a little about the history of the location? Well, the original bank comes from Port Glenone and uh, it was the Northern Bank of Port Glenone and the first manager was Thomas Edwin James and he lived there with his wife, Mary Rose Cleland. That was her name before she married. And uh, they had three children, a housekeeper called Agnes Cardwell, Liz the Cook and apparently a fellow called Andy that did the odd jobs around the house for the bank manager. And as part of the traditional tastings, I'm after having some delicious soup. Uh, could you tell us a little about the soup? Well, glad you like it. Uh, I made it by my own fair hands. It's a traditional vegetable soup. And uh, just like what your mum would go out and buy, all the vegetables, you chop, chop them up. Uh, and, but what I did, I stuck to the traditions and I used a beef stock and reduced that down. And uh, there's lots of carrots, lentils and barley in it and uh, some beef. And would that be very different from some of the packet soup that is available in shops today and that are very popular? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's all made with uh, very traditional and very pure ingredients, where the packet soups and the canned soups, unfortunately, are processed and a lot, a nerve full of lots of artificial preservatives and stuff, unfortunately. But many are still very tasty. Shan, we're very lucky to have gotten in the door here because all day we've seen people milling in and milling out. What is bringing everyone here? Can you tell us what you're making here today? Today I am making the traditional griddle soda bread. Uh, freshly made and the smell wafts out through the door. Of course it sends people mm, <laughs> and they make their, a, a beeline for, the, for the, the rectory. And this bread it has a very different texture to what we buy in the shop every day. Could you tell us what goes into this bread? Well, the, the bread that's made uh, by hand here in the Folk Museum is made simply with flour, baking soda, salt and buttermilk. No preservatives, no additives. Um, it has to be eaten fresh. Um, if I was in a situation where there would be some left, it would only be fit for frying tomorrow because it would be so hard. Uh, it, it dries out when it's put onto the griddle. Uh, everyone enjoys it. And of course, there's some made homemade jam to go along with that sort of bread. So lately, we've heard a lot of people criticising bread and maybe even telling us to avoid it. Would that be the case with this soda bread or is this completely healthy? This soda bread is completely healthy. There's no fat added. Um, there's just simply the flour, the baking soda and the buttermilk. The buttermilk and the baking soda combine on the griddle in the heat and produce a gas which makes the bread rise naturally. There's no yeast. Um, I can't think of anything nicer. Could you tell us about your experience with the Making Connections group? Well, I first heard of the Connections Group at the Belfast Museum. I picked up a leaflet and I found out that this is on every second Wednesday of the month. So I started coming and I've been coming ever since. So uh, today I've been to uh, see how the soda bread's made, how the pancakes are made, and now we're in the cinnamon toast room and it's been very enjoyable. And the foods that were being made here today, are they foods that you would have grown up eating? Yes, they would have been foods that I... Um, a lot of the old things here would remind me of my childhood. Um, my, my granny was a great cook and she would have made a lot of the things. She would have made butter too. John has just made me some lovely cinnamon toast. John, can you tell me, was this a staple growing up in your household? Yes, sir, we would have, when I was young, I would have been brought up basically on the uh, toast. Uh, part of no snacks would be on toast and so on. Uh, and we always used to fight over the heelogah bread. And some people would actually recognise that, especially older people, that the heelogah bread always tasted the best. And I have had people come in here manipulating themselves in the queue to make sure that they got the heel of the bread when they see it in the pile. So, uh, yeah, people have a lot of fond memories, basically, of toast over the fire. And it was a family get-together, you know, for us. It wasn't like a necessity because we had a fully modern kitchen. But I was lucky enough to grow up in an Edwardian house 
So we had the fire and everything in place. So every now and again we would sit with the toasting forks at the fire. So uh, yes, in a way. Do you think the toaster that everyone has in their household now makes toast as nice as it was made by the fire? Well, one of the things, I would say it's not as nice. Um, it definitely is because I've got a modern toaster. But one of the things is the bread's different okay. as well. When you're, what you're looking at is uh, batch bread. And the batch bread is similar to what we would have used 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, today, a lot of people have palm bread. And palm bread doesn't toast as well at the fire. And therefore, it's better in the toaster. But the uh, batch bread is better at the fire and scones and uh, whatever you know it can be better at the fair and um, marshmallows was another thing that they used to always do at Christmas so we'd always toast those at the fair so there was a whole range of stuff that they would do at the fair that we've if you like lost and people come in here it's just um, memories 